on the banks of the Grand River, high above the Allura Gorge. This is the Buzzer Podcast. Indie music, new releases, industry insiders, out of the box conversations with guests from the true north, from the west coast to the east coast, to across the pond, and from down under. And now, here is Shay. Hey y'all, I am Shay. This is the Buzzer Podcast. Welcome and enjoy episode 65. First music history for July 26th. In 1969, Johnny Cash released the single A Boy Named Sue. Cash was at the height of his popularity when he recorded the song live at California San Quentin State Prison at a concert on February 24, 1969. The song tells the tale of a young man's quest for revenge on a father who abandoned him at age three and whose only contribution to his entire life was naming him Sue. Country rock artist Ryan Connolly joins us today. Ryan is the former frontman and founder of the Mudslingers. You will hear country rock with a sleep twist of lyrics and riffs that will leave you craving another lick. Ryan's EP, his debut as a solo artist, releases this year. On the show, we spend tracks from the album. The resulting music is a perfect blend of old, young Nashville with several styles of classic rock. The artist builds upon his influences rather than copy traditional styles. Ryan Connolly has a sound all his own. Show up for the episode and get to know this artist. Few upcoming acts can pull off making music this good. Enjoy the show. Uh, hi, Ryan. How are you doing today? Thank you for coming on the show. Thanks for having me, Cher. Yeah. I, I've been following your music. You're actually uh, incredible. I would call it more uh, rock country than country rock, to be honest with you. I love it. Yeah. I, I love it. I love it. Definitely more on the, the rock side, for sure. Yeah, a lot of uh, the rock I see, uh, but uh, it also is like an old country style, but very modern and uh, classic rock in, in it. And it's incredible. It's incredible. Thank you. This is your debut as a solo artist. It is. What triggered your decision to leave the Mudslingers? Because you're the former frontman and founder of the Mudslingers. I am. Um, so there's a couple of things, really. What happened with the Mudslingers and myself was originally my brother and I had started a band and we had incorporated my cousin into that band. He played drums for us. And I guess what happened was we, we had more success than we thought we were going to have. We never thought that we'd actually get on the radio and we'd actually get, you know, some steam in the back of us. So when it happened, um, yeah. Well, life life happened too. So my brother got married. My cousin got married. They both have kids now. So at the time, I was kind of going through a divorce myself. So I went one way and they kind of went the other way. And I guess I feel like I just wasn't done with it. So I wanted to pursue it. And I had to find somebody to uh, to get me to that point. So Or to help me, I should say. Because I really did not have the ability, so to speak, to start a band from scratch and and kind of put all the pieces together. So it was a bit of a trial and error experience. And so was that Rob Layfield that got you here? Yeah, I think so. The first experience musically was with another producer. And I mean, for what it was, I think it, it went well. I'm not going to say anything bad about the experience. I learned a lot. Okay. Um, definitely things that happened there that I wasn't happy with. But when I met Rob, I guess it opened doors and opened parts of my musical kind of, I guess if you want to say musical path, it, it, it opened doors for me. And okay. Rob himself is, I, I know that you know Rob and most of Canada mm-hmm. knows Rob because he's been around the block <laughs> a time or two. <laughs> I think all of Canada would know Rob with his uh, background in the industry. Yeah. Yeah, so I think with Rob, it was just it kind of opened my eyes to being able to to explore my musical background and 
kind of elaborate on what I thought country was. Mm-hmm. So before, I, I think a lot of the time with the mudslingers, I was trying to fit into this box that we call country or country rock. And with Rob, I was able to kind of go to another place with it and, and be able to to pull some, you know, some classic rock and some hard rock and some old country at that and, and be able to put it all into a format that, that I think is going to resonate with, with the country world. Oh, definitely. I got very successful at it. So have you formed a band as part of this project? Yeah. So I guess along the way with the mudslingers, I had met some really great musicians and I kind of just kept tabs on them. So Lindsay Clark, who is a great musician, she's, She's a, I, I mean, she plays keys for, for me, but she, I think she plays a whole bunch of different instruments for everybody. And um, I actually reached out to her and we started to talk about what it was that I was trying to accomplish. Mm-hmm. And she literally built me a band. So the rhythm section was, is Dave Patel, who's a great drummer based out of Toronto. And then I have a guy named um, CJ Fernet who has gigged with, uh, I guess, Rob for the last 10 years. So with Rob uh, incorporated into that piece or into the puzzle, I really didn't have any reason to kind of hold back on exploring what it is that I wanted to do musically. Mm-hmm. So there was things before that I was kind of, you know, I I don't want to say that they, were, they weren't good musicians, but this group of of musicians is able to do anything. So I was able to kind of use my brain and, and kind of go somewhere that I wasn't able to go before. Yeah. Well, there has to be a synergy between the people that are playing within a band. So you, you can have the best players. And if there's not a synergy between the group, um, you need to change up the players. So, you know, exactly. And I have that. I think with Rob, uh, the biggest thing with Rob and I is that the first time we sat down and, and wrote together, or even the first time we really just played together, I mean, the first the first couple of shows that we played together were huge shows. Um, we opened for Granger Smith. Mm-hmm. We were put into a situation where we had to be good, and we depended on each other, and, and it worked out great. Then when we sat down to write, it was just an effortless kind of, we both didn't have to think about what we were doing. We both went to places that we, we wanted to go. We both felt like that's where the end goal was. Mm -hmm. And I think in past experiences, I just had a completely different experience, so to speak with the songwriting experience. And with this, it was just effortless. Well, your performance has always been strong. I went down the rabbit hole and watched some of the videos uh, from the past with the Mudslingers and uh, your videos today. And you're always strong, great vocals, great stage presence. Thank you. So what attracted you to country rock or rock country? Was it your background or your influence or the style? You know what? Everyone asked, asked me this question and why is it that I went country rather than going like, I guess my upbringing was more punk rock than anything. Like I listened, I mean, I got punk rock tattoos all over me. I mean, that was what I liked and that's what I, what I, what I was listening to in high school. Mm-hmm. But I guess, I guess what country is, is it comes down to the music, the musicianship obviously. And then the ability to, to take lyrics and, and, and music and, and actually tell a story. And I feel like that's what my, my strength is as a songwriter is I'm able, I'm able to take some of my life experiences and then incorporate them into a story that can be relatable to everyone. And I think that's what the goal of songwriting is. It's just, for me, the country format fits. That makes sense. So the, uh, the tra- first track that we're going to hear is uh, Jason Alzine. Mm-hmm. It's an incredible track. It's a tribute to Jason or a nod? It's funny. I don't think it was ever going to be a tribute to Jason. I just, I, I've always been an Aldean fan, but the song actually started just with the riff, that, that riff that you feel throughout the song. Yeah. Um, I had written that riff ages ago 
And I thought it, it sounded like something that he would do or his band would do. No, so I, just, I literally just built the song around the riff. And then I just took a whole bunch of catchphrases that Jason uses in a lot of his songs mm-hmm. and built and built the song around those catchphrases. So if you listen to the song, I think there's like 25 or 30 actual song titles of, of, of Jason's yeah, you know, it, his past CDs from, you know, 10 years ago or 15 years ago to now. And yeah, I just I told the that. story with those titles. Yeah, I caught that. I actually have I've been following him myself because one of our children is really into Jason LT. So <laughs> I followed to find out when his concerts were happening and stuff like that. Yeah. It's just a really good, uh, really good uh track that you produced and we're going to listen to Jason Aldean right now. Riding this town like a night train on the highway I'm gonna do things my way Running tattoos on this town As I'm driving around As I'm burning it down Just like Jason Aldean Just like I'm Jason Aldean highway it never felt so my way till i took off in the c28 american made 500 horses on an open terrain i popped the clutch and i slammed the gas i'm going nowhere but somewhere fast six gears of freedom baby don't make it last amarillo skies and asphalt riding this town like a night train on the highway I'm going to do things my way Running tattoos on this town As I'm driving around As I'm burning it down In this little country town Feeling like a freight train In the right lane Pedal to the metal Man, you gotta hear the engines Like you're over there In a passenger seat And you're hollering out at me Just like Jason Aldean Yeah, baby, got a wild side to the metal while I'm looking you in the eye I'm in a straight line to the neon lights Drinking and smoking and smoking and drinking And when them lights go down We'll be falling around and drinking them down And falling around and drinking them down And falling around and drinking them down Cause Jason Aldean, yeah, he's coming to town Riding this town like a night train on the highway I'm gonna do things my way Running tattoos on this town As I'm driving around as I'm burning it down in this little country town Feeling like a freight train in the right lane Pedal to the metal, man, you gotta hear the engines Like you're over there in a passenger seat And you're hollering out at me Just like Jason Aldean I, Like I'm Jason Aldean Got a tour bus pack full of girls with tight jeans I, And she down for the team And my band got banned, she wanna dance to entertain Alligator on my head and my boots fit the truth Told her call me Crocodile Dundee Like I'm Jason that thing. Riding this town like a night train on the highway. I'm gonna do things my way. Running tattoos on this town as I'm driving around, as I'm burning it down in this little country town. Feeling like a freight train in a right lane. Pedal to the metal, man, you gotta hear the engines like you're over there in a passenger seat and you're hollering out at me. <laughs> we back on a heck town, nothing town. Blasting out that Johnny Cash, no looking back. Wheels rolling, hot rolling. Come on, kick it, just like I'm Jason Aldean. So, but I when I've been looking on your uh, Facebook, and uh, I've been, as you know, we're friends on Facebook, and uh, we are. also uh, found your page and. Uh, you update uh, us with your music, which is really cool. But there's one thing I I, I noticed about you is a uh, is your you concentrate a lot on your personal development in terms of working out. Correct. And my background, just fun fact, I used to be a bodybuilder. That's so, awesome. Yeah. So I was looking at that. I'm going. This guy knows more. <laughs> about building than the average guy like it wasn't just pictures of you working out and today i was just looking into you and you actually studied kinesiology at concordia and salem state 
I did. So uh, the whole uh, working out thing, I, I mean, it's not something that I do for fun. It, it just became a lifestyle at this point. Um, well, you can tell. Yeah. It's really, it's really just something that I wake up and I do every day because it's part of my life now. It's not a choice. It's just something that I do because I feel like it's like eating breakfast or eating dinner. It's just part of me. I was a competitive athlete for so many years. And uh, when that stopped, I mean, you try, you have to fill the void or fill the time with something. And mm -hmm. I just filled it with working out. And what sport were you competitive at? Uh, I went to the United States for, uh, for hockey. And I, I went on a scholarship there for, a duration of time, but I also played, uh, I played football. I played uh, every sport growing up. I was, uh, my mom and dad lived at football fields and rinks. That's for sure. Oh, that's interesting. It's interesting. And you decided not to have a career in sports. I actually, um, I stopped playing sports because of injury. My knees, uh, my my knees are, are the weakest part of me. Let's just call it that. I've had a couple of knee surgeries and I've had hernias and I've had some back problems because of it all. So the whole, I mean, the whole working out doesn't hurt the back. It doesn't help the back. But mm -hmm. again, at this point, I can't stop. So it's just, it is what it is. It's part of me. Okay. So, yeah, so it's, it's good that you incorporated it in your life. But I did notice that you did it at a higher level and, I, when I saw that, I went, okay, that's why. <laughs> so, so uh, what got you into music? I think what got me into music, um, obviously I've always loved music, but but I think where the passion really started to, to take the wheel was after I stopped playing sports. Um, sports to me was everything. And, and when that, like I said before, when the time or when the, when that window of time goes and you're not able to compete anymore, you have to fill that void with something. Mm -hmm. And I think for me, a lot of the the difficulties and the the stress and the, you know, a lot of the garbage that comes with being an athlete, um, people don't realize how much it eats away at the, at the, you know, the individual that that's living that life experience. And I think with the music, I was able to write and like express myself in a way that I was not able to express myself in for. So all the songs that uh, are going to be on the upcoming EP um, have been written by yourself and you co-wrote with Rob Laidlaw or are some of them your own songs or um, so the way Rob and I have written since the beginning, everything's a co-write between Rob and I, but I mean, it depends on, on the song, like Al Dean, for example, was something that I started a long time ago and it, I, I, you know, brought it to, to Rob's attention and he was able to help me bring it to the place where it needed to be. Now, if you're talking to a song about chain reaction, Rob had this great, uh, guitar riff and a great chorus. And I wrote words to it. So it's really just been a complete collaboration of, of songwriting. Um, and, and again, like I said before, it, it's just been so effortless with Rob. It just feels like when we, when we go in to write something, we're mm -hmm. done in like 20 minutes. It's not like we're sitting there for two hours, you know, trying to pick the right word. It's just like, yeah, that's, that's the right word. Move on. And it's just, it's a great experience when things happen like that. Let's get to make that connection. How did you meet? Um, so, like I said before, Lindsay Clark, who I had played a couple shows with, with I don't remember, I don't know if you remember Jade Maya, mm -hmm. but uh, she was on the country circuit for a long time. And, and um, I met Lindsay because I had opened for Jade, I guess, six years ago now. Mm -hmm. And I kept in contact with her and she was good friends with Rob. And when I had okay. gotten the keys to a couple of larger shows, like I mentioned before, the Granger Smith show and yeah. Cole, Cole Creek County and a bunch of different other ones, um, I needed a band. And she was the one that kind of brought me and Rob together. He kind of oh, took okay. on the, the musical director role and we kind of just hit it off from there. Oh, that's cool. I, I didn't pick up that she actually connected you with uh, Rob. 
I thought yeah. she did just for the best. Really cool. That's really cool. So your influences in terms of artists, were you influenced by uh, artists like Tim McGraw, George Strait? I think my love for country started in the 90s. And it was like Toby Keith. And ah, he's Kenny my Jackson. favorite. He's my favorite. Yeah, Toby yeah. and Kenny. And yeah, um, that's what got me into country music. Montgomery Gentry. Um, mm -hmm. All of the older stuff is really what got me the, the wheel spinning with country. But I guess nowadays, um, nowadays, I mean, all I listen to is Eric Church. <laughs> Eric Church is, mm -hmm. is kind of the only thing that's relevant at this point. I think he's probably the best, art, if not the best, close to the best artist in the world. I think he he's a great songwriter and he is mm -hmm. completely out of the box yet sits in the box and gets radio play which is yeah something that not a lot of us can do so yeah, i agree with you i agree with you just what is your take on the country uh music today as a whole as uh, a lot of it doesn't sound like country at all yeah i think i think pop has taken over the country genre because for one it, it's it's popular so yeah. pop is whatever is popular and country is popular right now and I think with with the amount of people that are still buying music, I think that's what changes everything, right? So I don't know if I don't know if I would say that country country hasn't really changed. It's just there's been things that have been incorporated into country to make it pop. And mm -hmm. if it's selling, that's what's gonna continue to happen. They did it in the nineties, they you know what I mean, and they they're doing it now. Mm -hmm. So it's whatever, it's whatever is popular. And do I love it? Do I love country like I loved it in the 90s? Absolutely not. Mm -hmm. And I think I that's don't. why, that's <laughs> why I fall out of the, the genre so easily is because I get really bored with what you hear right now. Yeah. And, and it's hard to say, but like it's worse in the Canadian market than it is in the American. I feel like the, the Canadian market, it's really saturated with, you know, the same sound and the same story and the same thing all the time. Mm -hmm. I agree with you. I agree with you. That can happen. Um, I, I don't like uh, the the pop influence on country right now. Uh, I'm more of the old country. Um, yeah. What I, yeah. What I loved about your music is it, it's not actually, you can't really define you in a genre, even though I say rock country or uh, country rock. Uh, because, as you said, uh, you have influences and it comes out in your music from every uh, style, music style. It really yeah, does. I think I think that um, I think that country right now is probably the genre itself is, is more popular than it's ever been. But it's also the weakest it's ever been in the sense that you only mm -hmm. get a couple really great songs that come out per year. And then we all you know, we all love them. But I don't think the songwriting is what it was then. I just don't. Mm -hmm. I agree. I don't think I don't think it's good to sit in a uh, to sit in that that box. I really don't. Um, it, it's nice to kind of hear different influences. And somebody told me this a long time ago. I don't remember who it was now, but the best music doesn't have a genre. And I, I believe that. I, I, I really do believe that. I agree. That's actually one reason this podcast has music of all styles on it, because mm -hmm. I don't believe genre. I don't believe putting things into a box because it automatically you put the artist into a box and a true artist can't be put into a box Correct. because you create what you need to create and you have to create. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. So we're coming up to Chain Reaction next. I love it. It's raw. I, I love this. It's actually one of my favorites. Uh, what is it about? Chain Reaction was originally a song that, that, like I said before, Rob had this great country, sticky, dirty rock lick, which is evident throughout the whole song. It's, okay. you, could hear, you could hear the, you know, the gauge of the telly speaking that whole phrasing on the guitar and it's mm -hmm. so wiry and it's so country yet so rock right yeah it's incredible yeah and i think with chain reaction when i heard the riff it was like what can i 
how can I express this riff with lyrics that are going to match it? And the mm-hmm. first thing I, that came to my mind was, was sex. Like, it, that's what it is. It's like this raunchy, dirty, it's, it's just everything that you want it to be, but you don't want to talk, that you don't want to talk about it. You know what I mean? Like you don't want to say it out loud. So originally chain reaction was like, your love is like a a, a sex reaction and chain reaction turned, it turned into chain reaction and love, love is your drug instead of sex is my drug. Um, because I just don't think that people are going to appreciate it in the country genre, but I guess what we wanted to do is create the, um, the feeling and to have people understand what we're thinking about without using those words. So we, we changed some words. We used love and said, you know, and I think it turned out really good because, you know, a 10 year old could listen to it and not catch those things. But if a 30 year old was to listen to it, they're going to know exactly what you're talking about. You know what I mean? Yeah, I get it. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> I loved it. I loved it. It was really, so it was a really it's essentially just a trick with words and, and to really try to pull mm-hmm. out that raunchiness of the guitar in, in the lyric. Yeah, I agree. I love the beginning. Love the beginning. So what do you listen. love about it, if you don't mind me asking? Well, it, it's just the, it, it, it surprises you. It surprises me. Um, I love that you go right into being raw. It was different. I had listened to Butterfly yeah. uh, before that and Jason Aldean. And yeah. then I, I did a spin on Chain Reaction. Uh, my I was raised on country, but my first love is rock. Uh, so it uh, really spoke to what I like as a fan yeah. in terms of a delivery. It showed a different side to your music. Yeah. Um, I saw you in a different light in in the sense that I was just going through your music, Brian, right? Mm-hmm. And look at, listen to the country. So uh, that's where I said, well, this guy's not country rock. He's rock country to me. <laughs> uh, so that's what I felt. Is that the, what you wanted to... Uh, well, I, I think so, yeah, because like if you listen to my vocal, I guess it's not super country, right? It's not like super twangy. No, it's raw. It's raw. It, it, I, I might not be using I might be using the wrong word, but actually all my notes I went raw. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what I felt. Yeah, I think that's what the idea was with this project was just to try to you know, rather than trying to pretend like we're from Nashville and we're you know, we're doing country music in in Toronto, we're going to just make it what it is. And hopefully people will see the value in that rather than trying to, again, put it into a box as being not country or not rock or not indie. You know what I mean? It'll just, I hope it resonates with people that way. I think it will. Yeah. We're going to listen to Chain Reaction.
Shelter me from my stone Hang around my fire, baby Feel my hands run Chain, chain, chain reaction Right on Your love is my drug Our love is like a chain reaction Bumping lines right to my heart Your love Your love is my drug Baby, just a chain reaction For bubble bumping lines Straight through my heart The love reaction Straight through my heart A love reaction Jason Aldean and Chain Reaction and the other two tracks we're going to listen to tonight with Doors and Butterfly. They're all going to be on your self-entitled EP that is expected Yeah. soon? Yeah, I think we're going to... Uh, we're, uh, my uh, Our plan, because of COVID, was to origin, originally we are going to release it this June, mm-hmm. but... I, with COVID and all that kind of stuff, it'll probably be August by the time we're we're set to release our first single. And then I guess from there, we'll just start building and then finally release the whole thing. Are you going to try to plan a tour after, around it? Yeah, so the album was actually ready last last year. And then we went back and we did some tweaks to the vocals and we did some tweaks to the guitars and stuff like that because we've had the time because of COVID. Mm-hmm. And I didn't really want our, our team, myself and Rob, didn't want to. We didn't want to waste the potential of having a great tour because of COVID. You know, you release, you work this hard on on a project, and then you go and and COVID hits, and you're not able to tour it. You're not able to ex- get the exposure that that you need essentially to build an album and build a fan base. So. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's hard right now because you, let's just say we do release Chain Reaction. I mean, who's going to hear it unless you're, you know, you, you get lucky and a couple of radio stations spin it and then, you know, it, it grows from there. You really do need that live contact to, content to, uh, to spark the fire. Yeah, you need that momentum. I agree with you. Especially with the way that our live performance is, I feel like that is what's going to light the fire under this album. Well, I'd love to see you live because the videos that I saw you very powerful presence on stage. Thank you. Like uh, you stand out. A lot of times when a band is uh, and a band is on stage, it's the, it's the band. Like when I see you on stage, I see you with the band. Mm-hmm. Like your very strong presence. Thank you. So, is Doors about? As the new beginning, like a new beginning of uh, you becoming think, a debut artist or a new beginning about generality or? I think Doors was um, an idea that I had that I wanted to write for a long time. I just didn't have the words and the hmm. ability to to tell the story like I wanted to. So I think Doors is just fueled by a, a lot of life experience and a lot of bad things happening to me. I just, you know, you you come out of those things and and experiences where you do have loss and you do learn uh, Mm -hmm. after the fact that that doors do open again. And, you know, I want to say shit happens like it it does and you you will get out of it. It, It's not the be all end all. You just got to stay focused and and really put yourself into a situation where you're dealing with people every day that are going to motivate you to get out of those bad places. And that's what Doors was about. It's just when one door closes, another will eventually, you know, open. Yeah, it was very motivational. Very motivational. I was trying to put a historical content spread, context on it. Historically speaking, I guess for me, I went through a really bad divorce 
Yeah, um, I was going to say that, but then I didn't want to. Bring yeah, it up. that's okay. It, that's it. So uh, that's sort of when you said you were divorced. Yeah, just, yeah. So, so it indoors, was about that. Yeah. Yeah, it was definitely fueled by that, and. Yeah. Okay. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah, I think that it was just fueled for a lot of bad things, drugs and alcohol. And, um, you know, when you see somebody at their worst that you love, it, it's almost harder to be the individual that's not in the pain and dealing with the substance abuse. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I it's harder to be the outsider looking in because you want to save them. I mean, I'm sure they want to save themselves, too. But at the same time, you're looking at them and you're completely helpless, just like they are. So you don't know what it is that you're supposed to do. It's difficult for the uh, the people around as much as it is for the addict. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it, it definitely came through. It definitely came through. And I'm glad you brought it up because I wanted to bring it up, but I didn't want to offend you. So. Of course. No, absolutely yeah. not. I'm, I'm an open book. I always say that if there's something to ask, ask it. Yeah. I'm a free spirit. That's cool. Let's go. We're going to spin it now. So Doors by Ryan Connell. These changes happen now. I don't understand it and I can't figure out why this window closes when I want it to open. So take my Love the melody. Love the melody. Just yeah, you really, you really did well in getting the message out. Are any of these songs going to have a video? With yeah, them? I think I think really. I mean, the song, the the EP is technically seven songs long. I think I would love to. It's seven yeah, songs. It's seven, so it's, okay. you, you probably have heard six, and there's one other track that is just a cover. We actually um, we did a cover of Dreams by the Cranberries. And we put it like a, a, a country, 
kind of a very country eighties rock vibe on it, which is something completely out of the box. Um, I I've heard oh, of, I love it. <laughs> cool. Yeah. 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 It's got a gang vocal in it. It's just, it's different. So it'll kind of be something on the B side that, that people hear and go, hopefully they go, wow, that's really different. And, you know, gives the, the song, which I thought was a great song. Um, some life again. Yeah. It's just, um, what, what was behind the choice to cover, to cover dream? Uh, yeah. Well, I'm Irish. My, my family is Irish. So I've always kind of loved hearing the Irish kind of, and she's got such a Southern accent. You can hear it when she sings. And it was something that I always really yeah, drawn really to true. just because I loved the way she spoke. And um, she's, mm-hmm. she obviously had, you know, the voice of an angel. So when, um, when I actually, the, the, what, what sparked the song or what sparked the actual cover was I was watching Dairy Girls with my mom and um, she's like, wow, I love that song. And I said, you know what? I do too. I'm going to cover that song. And um, it just sparked from there. I, I asked Rob if he said he thought it was a good idea. And he said, yeah, it's a great song. It, it would actually fit into what we're trying to accomplish rather well. Mm-hmm. It does. It does. I look forward to hearing the uh, the final rendition of the full EP. It'll be great. Thanks. So let's talk about Butterfly. Another song, I guess, dedicated to uh, individual change or personal reflection, or is it a tribute to uh, a relationship? I think it's a tribute to a relationship. Um, the butterfly is just, I, I, it's you're my butterfly is something that I came up with just because when you know you're it's the early stages of love or even when it's the the later stages of love that you get those butterflies in your stomach and it's okay. something that it's yeah. something that you never forget the first time you feel it you, you, you're always chasing that butterfly or the feeling of that butterfly because it makes you feel so warm and I think that's what the whole catchphrase is of the song you're you're this you're my butterfly on this heart of mine or in this heart of mine and it's it's just something that I think we all go through as as you know people when you fall in love for the first time you it's never quite like that first time because you're so vulnerable and you fall so hard and that was the just the way the song was built um I just related mm-hmm. it to it you know somebody going to a bar in Nashville and meeting and meeting mm-hmm. the, the the person of their dreams and then from that point on the the, the song just the song just builds from there. Yeah. You, you meet them and they start having kids and, you know, things happen and life gets busy and hard. But at the end of the day, they still both have butterflies. Yeah. I, no, I caught that. I caught that. That there was it about, I guess I was putting more, I was putting more, uh, like I'm creative too. So I was trying to look for artistic, uh, background for it and I honestly thought it fit also in because of the lyrics and that um, she's your butterfly but she's going through all these metamorphoses yeah like, I mean sort of, yeah like the, the meeting and the change and the babies and uh, so I, I I thought it was incredible it's like a dual uh, it's just like a, to me I saw yeah. or that's what I saw was a and, dual and that's message. the whole point of the really I mean the butterfly in my context was um was the actual feeling in your stomach but um mm-hmm. a, the butterfly the reason why it works so well is exactly what you're saying is I mean the butterfly will the evolution of the butterfly there you can literally see it age and that's exactly what the song mm-hmm. is you go through a whole lifespan of two people in love and and it's just a great metaphor yeah i thought it was incredible incredible that you did that incredible incredible so we're gonna listen to it now butterfly when i wake up in the morning and everything is dark Cigarette smoke still lingering in my hair. 
That's not the vibe in the country dive Your bright blue eyes in Tootsie's line Oh, when I close my eyes, your lips against mine You're everything I want You're everything I need You're the shadow on the floor No one's danced here before When the world gets crazy And you're falling through the cracks You're my butterfly In this heart of mine They say that heaven's door will open When you find your soul to keep Silverado skies Angels cry, demons die I'll be with you for the rest of my life Tin cans popping on Interstate 65 I'm really impressed with uh, you and your music. Thank you. I'm really impressed. I think everybody has the ability to do it, but it, it, when it's done from the from the heart and for the right reasons, usually those those songs or those artists transcend. Yeah, I agree with you. So, what is the reason behind you doing this? What motivates you? To keep on doing this? Yeah. I think it's literally just something that's inside you. It's it's the will or the, the motivation and the the willingness to create something and to create a, mm-hmm. a feeling of emotion that is able to relate to not just yourself, but to a complete demographic of people that feel the same way you do, that don't have the ability or haven't thought about a way to express themselves. And when you find mm-hmm. that one song that everybody relates to, you know, it's, it's, it's epic. It's, it's something that, mm-hmm. that only happens to very few people. But when, when that person or when, that, when, the, when people hear that song, it connects everybody. So why wouldn't you want to yeah, try to take a stab at, at, at making everybody feel connected? Yeah, 100%. Based on what you're saying, connection is really important to you as an artist. Connection is the most important. And most of the artists that I listen to are the best at connecting. Performing live important to you? Yeah, like that. And that's going back to why we we didn't release this last year. Uh, I don't see the point of being an artist without the live performance. I think that. Mm-hmm. Being on stage and being able to look into the people's eyes that you're singing to or playing to is a completely different experience than having your song on the radio. It's so much more personal mm-hmm. and it's so much more real. When you see somebody mouthing your words or even when you're doing a cover and they're moving with you, there's nothing like that feeling. You can't, you can't recreate that feeling 
unless you're on stage yeah, unless you you're on stage them. doing the exact thing we're talking about yeah i'm a big fan of uh live yeah me too it, yeah, it kills yeah. me not going to see concerts it, it just kills me Yes, yeah. I know. I know it's killing it's killing me, trust me. Trust me. I it's a weekly thing. I, that's what I do. I don't go to movies. I don't do the dinner thing. I go to concerts. I will say <laughs> right? so, I will say that, <laughs> that honestly, that's what I do. That's my entertainment budget, concerts. That's the way to be. I would uh, I would completely agree with you. I will say the last the last two concerts that I went to was uh the last one was an air church church concert in uh in toronto uh, and then the one before that was uh i seen fleetwood mac twice in the same year so i yeah. will never for if, if i'm never going to a show again if covid goes rapid and we're never able to go to shows again at least i got to see my two favorite artists yeah yeah oh i'm sure it'll open up yeah. again I had to actually, I you know what? I had a whole a whole year of concerts planned mm -hmm. last year, <laughs> and but it's the honestly my last concert since you've, I was uh, a Rolling Stones tribute and they did really well. Where was it? They did really well. I was like, I live out in farm country, so it was a local <laughs> theater um, out in uh, Alora area. But you know what? I, my husband and I, you know, we didn't want to go to the city for the, and it was shit playing downtown. Yep. Do I sound like a country hit? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so we bought some tickets and uh, really downtown, good man. Now all 15 um, of you were there. <laughs> downtown yeah but they, it was really good and uh because i cover music right i knew one of the artists that was doing it for the night he's usually in the other band and uh had a, a meeting you know uh, a drink yep. with him before well he didn't drink but i had a drink before the show and we saw the show it did amazing yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, I really miss the uh, festival season and the concert season but uh I believe it's yeah, going to come back. We you know, already start uh, to feel it. I think they're starting to get a little bit better. So hopefully another yeah, month or two and yeah. we should start seeing some things open, I guess. Yeah, well, you're definitely on my list, son. Definitely on my That's list. Awesome. By the way, I don't know if you've heard, I don't know if you've heard uh, the new John Mayer album, but it's just off the wall. Amazing. I didn't hear the John artist. Mayer. John Mayer just released. Uh, well, he hasn't released the album yet, but he's re released a couple new singles, and uh, yeah, it's crazy. It's called Sob Rock. I think it releases the full album oh, wow. on like June sixteenth or something like that. But what like the new track? I think is That's called um, Last Train Home, and it is like an eighties rock vibe, and it's just incredible. You got to check it out. That's good. Oh. I know I will check it out. I will check it out. Sometimes I, I'm so busy with uh, new music, indie music, and all that that I don't get a chance to keep up on. I hear you. Other stuff, but yeah, so it's a lot of releases this it's year. It's part of the problem about being an a artist. Lot of you never actually hear anybody else's stuff because you're continuously working on yours. <laughs> <laughs> but when you yeah. hear a great song, it's always yeah, good to I, mention it. I, I feel like there's not that many great artists out there right now. So, mm, here, yeah. here, yeah, yeah, and they do need recognition Absolutely. like yourself. So, I, I see you're busiest on Instagram or Facebook. I think I'm busiest on Instagram. I mean, I, I try to keep them both the same just because um, it's easier for me. I, it's, it's the same feeling on both sides, like so. Yeah, if you if you follow me on Facebook or you follow me on Instagram, it's literally the same thing, but I'm on both. Yeah, no, they're pretty much the same thing. Oh, actually, Instagram is one of my favorite platforms. Yeah, Instagram's great yeah, because it's visual. And, Instagram's yeah. great because it's. It, I mean, I, I just feel like the the app itself works a lot better than Facebook. Facebook's more, I think, based upon. <laughs> I think the demographic of Facebook is like from forty to sixty, and I think the Instagram demographic is like fifteen to 80 everyone has facebook uh, instagram sorry right like it's just a thing so yeah because like people like to share exactly. the pictures <laughs> exactly right? so. uh, even if it's like uh you know some of their good friends but they share the dinner yeah. every night but that's cool 
Well, thank you so much for coming on the show. I really appreciate your time. I want to thank and you too for, for you. having me. I mean, I haven't done this in so long, so it's nice to talk to somebody about music. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it I is, feel like it? I've been uh, like cocooned up in this house for the last year and a half now. So it's it's nice to talk to somebody that uh, that's interested for sure. Uh, awesome. Well, I'm definitely interested. And uh, fans, uh, people really should be following you. And uh, oh, the one thing I wanted to ask you before I was looking at your video, uh, the Ryan Connolly yep. project, and a two words come out a couple times, maybe twice or three times unusual perception. Yeah, so unusual perception is. Uh um, the individual that shot the video, it's, it's his, his, um, it's his, I guess his company name is what it is. So he just wanted to plug. I figured I would, you know, keep it in the video because it's good for him to try to get some publicity and get his name out there. So that's what unusual perception is. But the name of the album, if you were wondering okay. what the name of the album was, if that's what you thought it was going to be a hint or something like that. Yeah, yeah. I, I really, to be honest with you, Shay, I have not named the album yet. I have no idea what to call this album. Oh, I thought it was self-entitled. That's the idea right now, I guess. Like, oh, okay. that, and that's why it's you self-titled, because I just don't. And here, here I am as a lyricist, oh. and I, I can't find, I can't find two words to put on a on, on the front of a, an album cover. But it's just it's something that I can't do right now. <laughs> Actually, that's not that's not so uh, that's not so uh, uncommon. Is it not? Uh, so, you would be, you would believe the amount of submissions I get that are untitled, and I I used to laugh and go, "Oh, come on! You wrote the song. You know you can put a title." And some of them are just so raw, or have put so much artistic energy into building the song or building yeah. the EP that they don't they don't have it. I mean, they've even had fan contests where they say, "Okay, name the yeah, album," I mean, <laughs> or or name the EP. Or, uh, yeah, uh, so it's not uncommon. I, I don't. I just like you said at the beginning of the podcast. Like, there's so much. A, different material in, in in this album like it's not an album where you're gonna listen to it the first song and go okay that's the same thing as the sixth song on the album it, they're completely different like every song has a different vibe and there's some vibes oh, are coming from the heart and some are not coming from the heart and some are very different and dark so it's like you know like it's just it's it's hard to come up with with you know, two words or a catchphrase that are going to be able to explain that. And that's why I think the self-titled mm. album for me on this, on this record is, is going to be the best because that's literally what I am. And I, you know, it, it's, it's just an expression mm. of me and what it is that I am as an artist. So. Yeah. Yeah. I can see that, but it's not uncommon. Just Thank let you. you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's incredible. Thank album. You. That's going to do really well. So thank you. I really appreciate, appreciate your time. You. And I look forward to, I look forward to following your growth as an artist. Because I think you're going to be doing a lot of noise in the thank country. You. I appreciate that, Shay. Yeah. I hope you have a good rest of the summer. And yeah. um, thanks for having me. Stay safe and yeah, COVID-free. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Don't we all put it behind. <laughs> <laughs> Night. Good night. Well, thank you all for tuning in. That's a wrap. Episodes run Mondays and Tuesdays at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Who shows up and what we talk about? Who knows right now? Live on the edge. Just tune in and enjoy. Thank you to the artists on today's show. This show wouldn't happen without your music. Promote the music on social media. The more people hear the music, the farther the music will reach. Follow us on Instagram at The Buzz Row Media and on Twitter at The Buzzer Indie. Subscribe to us at TheBuzzerPod.com. The Buzz Row Media has sponsored this podcast. Catch you at the pod next episode on Air Indie.
from my pad to yours over the airways. Have a good one. See you next episode. Cheers. Well, thank you all for tuning in. That's a wrap. Episodes run Mondays and Tuesdays at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Who shows up and what we talk about? Who knows right now? Live on the edge. Just tune in and enjoy. Thank you to the artists on today's show. This show wouldn't happen without your music. Promote the music on social media. The more people hear the music, the farther the music will reach. Follow us on Instagram at The Buzz Row Media and on Twitter at The Buzzer Indie. Subscribe to us at TheBuzzerPod.com. The Buzz Row Media has sponsored this podcast. Catch you at the pod next episode on Air Indie. From my pad to yours, over the airways. Have a good one. See you next episode. Cheers.